All right, guys. So one thing that's pretty awesome with, with Lego that a lot of people don't realize is the the power of the Bluetooth connection and the daisy chaining of, of bricks. And so one of the things that you can do is you can take a brick and turn it into a remote control. Now this one is nothing special yet. Wait till the final design. But I can take this brick and write a code that sends messages to this brick or this robot here to have it do a variety of things. And so by now you've probably played with Lego EV3 Commander app, but now we can create our own and be more precise and specific and really get what we need. So one of the things that you can do is I could take this push button right here, this touch sensor, and when I hit it, my arm should just slam down, which was great for a challenge that we've been doing. And then I've got controls where if I go down, it goes backwards, forward, right or left, and then the middle one, he does a little crazy dance. So let's take a look at how we can get this brick to have conversations with this brick to do some really, really awesome things. All right, guys, so if we want to have two bricks communicate to each other, we have to create two programs. Now, you're probably thinking, oh, my gosh, I do not want to create two programs. Trust me, it's not as difficult as what, what you think. And so the first one we're going to be creating is the controller. This is uh, the piece of, of code that's going to take the one brick and make it your joystick, your remote control, to do what you want your robot to actually do. So... Let's go ahead and mimic this here um, to start. So what we're going to do here is we are going to engage the Bluetooth. So these dark blue blocks are all our Bluetooth kind of more advanced coding blocks, which is something that a lot of people don't mess with because they're intimidated by. But there, it, it's really nothing to be uh, stressed or thinking that you can't do it because it's not any different than controlling motors. So we're going to start here and we're going to actually going to turn on the Bluetooth connection and we're going to get that going. And we're going to click this and turn it into an initiate. I mean, we're going to start up the, the Bluetooth here. The next thing that we're going to do is we want to put a, a loop block in here because we want the controller to constantly be in this loop concept. It's going back and doing whatever it is that, that you're going to design it to do. Um, within this this block and so the, what I'm going to do is just use the brick interface for this example using the up down right and left and, and middle buttons on the actual brick uh, but I'll show you how you can use this with with anything else so let's go ahead and drop in a switch block right in this program and what we want to do is we want to have a bunch of different states and so on the brick you know that there are potentially two four there's five buttons that that we can use and so we need to change this state from not a touch sensor but to brick buttons and that's what we're gonna mess with here for this particular one now we start with two in here uh, but we're gonna need some more than that, or depending on, maybe you don't want every button to do something, so you don't have to. Um, that's, that's perfectly fine as we get going here. And what we're gonna do here is I'm actually gonna change these states. And so if you click up here, you can see where there's a little red dot. I can make this read whatever I want it to read. So I'm actually just gonna do this one here is the default with the dot right here with no buttons pressed. And the reason for that is we want it when it turns on, we don't want it to just take off doing something. So we've got that. And then we're just gonna go through and we're gonna just create all the different conditions that we want. So here's pushing the up button. We're gonna add another case. I'm gonna hit this exclamation. And then we're gonna go to the right. I'm going to add another case, then I went down, another case, now I went to the left, add one more case here, and I want the middle button pressed. So now I've got one, two, three, four, five, six for the five buttons, and then one of no buttons being pressed at all. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drop in 
our messaging. So every time we push a button, it's going to send a message. It's kind of like a text message, but oh, it's, it's through, through Bluetooth. And we're going to drop these in. Now, this is to send the text. This is what brick do you want it to receive? And so when I go and plug my brick in, you get your brick name and where you, where you get that if you don't know. Let me go ahead and plug this into the robot that's going to receive. Down here is the name of my brick. And so I've made mine really easy. My robot's one and my controller is two. So I can just go in here and type in one because this is the brick that's going to receive it. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that for the rest of these. I'm going to make these all one. Okay, now I just need to put in the name of the message. What's the message you want the robot to read or, or see? So I'm just going to put in SAP. This one's going to be forward. This one's going to be right. Backward. Left. And then we'll call this one fire. And that's it. So what this program does is every time I push the button on the brick, it's going to send a message to brick one with this name. So then let's go ahead and create the second code so the robot actually knows what to do with all this information. Oh, we forgot one thing here. We need to make sure this says one. We're going to initiate the, the communication there. Uh, with one. Okay, so this is the receiver. This is the code in which the, the robot that you want to be doing stuff um, can actually do the stuff. So let's go through this. All right, and we'll just recreate this here as well. Once again, a very, very easy program um, to do. So we're just going to go ahead and grab a loop just like we did with the controller because we want this in a constant state of looping through to see what's going to be happening. We're going to drop in a Bluetooth block again, just like we did with all of these. But now we're not sending. This time we're actually going to be receiving. So we're going to re be receiving a text. And that text is these words, these commands. So in this program, they're sending a text message. On the receiver, they're now saying they're going to receive a text. And so we have to program all those different text messages that could potentially come to the robot. And so we're going to switch this here to text because that's what it's going to read. And we're just going to connect this. So it's going to get the message. It's going to shoot it into a text mode. And now we go. And so this is the default one. So I want. I got stop here, and then I'm just going to go through all my commands. So I had typed forward, and then we had, we went to the right, I had backward, left. And then I had fire. So now this is just your basic programming. So if I want to stop, what do you want it to do? So when the robot gets the stop message, okay, to, to stop, I just want my motors off, correct? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to switch to the, the motors that I have in my robot. You choose that to whatever you want it to be. I'm turning it off. If I want it to go forward, what do I want it to do? Okay, I, I want to go forward. So I'm going to move my motors to A and D. I want to go fast. So I'm going to make this go 
100. And I'm going to leave this on. It's going to keep doing that until the next loop condition comes in. All right. If I want to go to the right, now you can adjust these to make it whatever you want. Your robots can be different than mine. So, you know, I know yesterday when I was messing with this, I needed more turns. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. And they go backwards. It's just like this one here, but negative. Wrap that in. And then go left is just the opposite of right. Let's make that 10. Make that 70. And then the fire, what I have here is I have one motor. And so, as you saw at the beginning, so I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to go um, rotations. And for me, just because I already know what it is, I know what I want. You dial that in depending on your arm. I can't I can't predict that for you. And I'm ready to go. Okay? Now one last thing that you could do, if I go back here to the controller, check this out. What I didn't put in originally is I have an extra data wire that goes down here because I can start to create some more advanced controllers and, and joysticks and things of that nature. So check this out. I can go down here and I can create another switch right here. And I can actually do this with the touch sensor. I can do this with, with any sensor that I want. And this is where I can't wait to see what it is that you guys are going to create because you're so smarter than me. Um, and your creativity runs wild. And so I'm going to, just going to go down and connect this here. Oh, I thought I was. Let's try that again here. There we go. All right. And now what I can do is just turn this on. And so if I have a touch sensor, I can program another little item here, a text, brick one, and I just called it crazy. So what we were doing balloon wars yesterday, this was my my uh, emergency mode. And I go down here on the receiver. And you can see I can just add another condition here. Another case. And these are all text messages, so I don't have to do anything different here. And I can just call this crazy. And what I was doing was, yesterday, what we were messing around with, we were having some, some balloon battles. Um, I just had my robot spin around like crazy man. And I can have this negative 100 and 100. So that would just cause my robot to spin. But you can do this with anything. So in your controller, you could drop in motors. You can drop in anything you want. So if I'm turning a motor, I can actually put a wheel on a motor sideways and make that my joystick. I can do stuff with the ultrasonic. Any of those sensors like we've been doing, you can have it send a message and program it to do whatever you want and create like your true arcade video game console. So here it is, guys. This is how to create a Bluetooth program to control your EV3 brick. I can't wait to see your designs, ideas, and, and creativity. Let's make it awesome. Have a good one. All right, guys, so the very last thing, 
to go ahead and run your programs, I know it's probably a little hard to see, but once you have them downloaded in your project, your brick that you want to actually do all the moving, that's your receiver, whatever you've called that receiver. So you go ahead and run that, and you can see that it's, it's going there. On your controller, you then want to run that controller command, whatever you name that. And then once they're both going, then you're in business. About as simple as you can possibly get.